Good day everyone, today we are going to present the chapter 1, Introduction to History, which includes the definition, issues, sources, and methodology. The first presenter will be Ms. Sarah Grace Dudas, and she will discuss the definition. Learning Objectives To understand the meaning of history as an academic discipline and to be familiar with the underlying philosophy and methodology of the discipline. To apply the knowledge in historical methodology and philosophy in assessing and analyzing existing historical narratives. To examine and assess critically and the value of historical evidences and sources. To appreciate the importance of history in the social and national life of the Philippines. Chapter, we will introduce history as a discipline and as a narrative. It represents the definition of the history, which transcends the common definition of history as the study of the past. This chapter also discusses several issues in history that consequently opens up for the theoretical aspects of the discipline. The, dis the distinction between primary and secondary sources is also discussed in relation to the historical subject matter being studied and the historical methodology employed by the historian. Ultimately, this chapter also tackles the task of the historian as the arbiter of facts and evidences in making his interpretation and forming historical narrative. History has always been known as the study of the past. In this subject, we always talk or discuss about the events in the past that we must know in our generation today. Students of general education often dread the subject for its notoriety in requiring them to memorize dates, places, names, and events from distant eras. Nowadays, students think that it is difficult to study history because when history is discussed, it means many dates, places, people's name, and events that they must memorize or they must need to memorize but if we continue to underestimate history simply because of the things we should memorize our knowledge about history may be limited and we can't understand how the history are related in our lives today while the popular definition of history as the study of the past is not wrong it does not give justice to the complexity of the subject and its importance to human civilization. Hindi mali na ang ibig sabihin ng history ay pag-aaral ng nakaraan ngunit hindi nito na ipapaliwanag ng maayos kung gaano kakomplikado at kahalaga na dapat bilang isang individual ay matutunan natin ang kasaysayan. We must need to have a deep learning or a deep knowledge about the definition of history not only in the sense of studying the past. History was derived from the Greek word historia, which means knowledge acquired through inquiry or investigation o kaalaman na nakuha sa pamamagitan ng pagtatanong o pagsisiyasat. History as a discipline existed for around 2,400 years and it is as old as mathematics and philosophy. This term was then adapted to classical Latin where it acquired a new definition. Historia became known as the account of the past of a person or of a group of people through written documents and historical evidences. That meaning stuck until the early parts of the 20th century History became an important academic discipline. It became the historian's duty to write about the lives of important individuals like monarchs, heroes, saints, and nobilities. History was also focused on writing about wars, revolution, and other important breakthroughs. History is not just about the person's bibliography and events about his or her life, but in history, we can read and know the things that our country and our fellow Filipinos have achieved. Kaya mahalaga rin na tanungin natin kung ano ang mga bagay na binibilang bilang kasaysayan at kung paan ito masasabi na isa itong kasaysayan. Historians live with the mantra of no document, no history. 
It means that unless a written document can prove a certain historical event, then it cannot be considered as a historical fact. Historian means it is a, is a person who studies and writes about the past and is regarded as an authority on it. Like the other academic discipline, history progress and open up to the, possi to the possibility of valid historical sources which were not limited to written documents like government records, chroniclers, accounts, or personal letters. Giving premium to written documents essentially invalidates the history of other civilization that do not keep written records. Ang ilan ay masigasig sa pagpasa ng kanilang kasaysayan sa pamamagitan ng salita ng bibig. O, o, ang iba ay sinunog o nawasak ang kanilang mga makasaysayan dokumento o mga kaganapan ng digmaan o kolonisasyon. Treating historical evidence as exclusively written is also discrimination against other social classes who were not recorded in paper. Halimbawa nito ay ang mga mahardika noong una na may kakayahan silang irehistro ang, ang kanilang kapanganakan, kasal, edukasyon, at maging kamatayan. Subalit, paano ang mga magsasaka at ang mga katutubo na hindi gaanong na pag-isipang mairehistro sa gobyerno ay nangangahulugan ba na hindi sila nag exist sa mundo or wala silang kasaysayan dahil sa kawalan ng dokumento. This loophole was recognized by historians who started using other kinds of historical sources which may not be written, maybe in written form but were just as valid. Ang butas na ito ay kinilala ng mga mananalaysay na nagsimulang gumamit ng iba pang uri ng mga mapagkukunang pangkasaysayan na maaring wala sa nakasulat na anyo ngunit kasing bisa nito. Ang ilan sa mga halimbawang ito ay ang mga oral na tradisyon sa anyo ng mga epiko at kanta, artifact, ak arkitektura at memoria. History thus become more inclusive and started collaborating with other disciplines as its auxiliary disciplines. With the help of archaeologists, historians can use artifacts from a bygone era to study ancient civilization that were form formerly ignored in history because of lack of documents, so that even without the document from the government, they can able to know the history of every individual, elite, or even the indigenous group. Linguist, scientists like biologists and biochemists can help with the study of the past. For linguists, they can trace the historical evolutions, past connections among different groups and flow of cultural influence by studying the language and the changes that it has undergone. And for scientists like biologists and biochemists, they can help with the study of the past through analyzing genetic and DNA patterns of human society. Hi, I'm Crystal Fabula Bourbon and I will be presenting to you the issues. History has already evolved into a complex and dynamic field of study. As a result of this dynamicism, various perspectives on a discipline emerge. History is complex because we need to understand why do we need to study the history, what is history, and other questions that we may think of. As history itself, it is dynamic process. By this, I mean a rich, varied, evolving intellectual system that allows us to achieve a deeper and better understanding of our world, indeed of ourselves. One of the examples of this is the history of tuberculosis. Back then, the disease called tuberculosis is deadly, and as years goes by, the humanity learned the history, and to stop that from this disease, someone had to create a medicine or vaccine to it. That's why in 1943, Salman Waxman discovered a compound that acted against tuberculosis called streptomycin. And with this example, we can see the history is evolving and it is continuous. Positivism is a term that used to describe an approach to the study of society that relies specifically on empirical scientific evidence 
such as controlled experiments and statistics. Example, using a fieldwork, researchers immerse themselves in other culture to learn about it. Modern psychologists don't embrace the version of one true vision as a goal of sociology like Comte did. Facitivism is the view that the only authentic knowledge is specific knowledge and that such as knowledge can only come from a positive affirmation of theories through the strict scientific method, techniques for investigating phenomena based on gathering observable empirical and measurable evidence, subject to specific principle of reasoning. The doctrine was developed in the mid-19th century by French sociologist and philosopher Auguste Comte in 1798 to 1857. Positivism also entails an objective means of arriving at a conclusion. In discipline of the history, the mantra, no document, no history stems from this very same truth, where historians were required to show written primary documents in order to write a particular historical narrative. The term positive in the epistemological sense indicates a value-free for objective approach to study of humanity that shares much, much in common with methods employed in a natural sciences as constructed with normative which is indicated of how things should be or ought to be. Importance of history. First is history has played various roles in the past. Second, States use history to unite a nation. Third, it can be used as a tool to legitimize regimes and forge as a sense of collective identity through collective memory. Next is, lessons from the past can be used to make sense of the present. Learning of past mistakes can help people not repeat them. Last is, being reminded of a great past can inspire people to keep their good practices to move forward. And that is the reason why history is very important in humanity. Example, when the illustrados like Jose Rizal, Isabelo de los Reyes, and Pedro Paterno wrote history, they intended it for the Spaniards so that they would realize that Filipinos are people of their own intellect and culture. When American historians depicted the Filipino people as uncivilized, in their publications, they intended that narrative for their fellow Americans to justify their colonization of the islands. They wanted the colonization to appear not as the means of undermining the Philippines sovereignty, but as a civilizing mission to fulfill what they called as the white man's burden. The same is true for nations which prescribe official versions of their history like North Korea, the Nazi Germany during the war period and Thailand. The same was attempted by Marcos in the Philippines during the 1970s. Postcolonialism is an intellectual direction, sometimes also called an era or postcolonial theory, that exists since around the middle of the 20th century. It developed from and mainly refers to the time colonialism. Postcolonial history looks at two things in writing history. First is to tell the history of their nation that will highlight their identity free from the colonial discourage and knowledge. Second is to criticize the methods, effects, and ideas of colonialism. One of the problems confronted by the history is the accusation that the history is always written by the victors. This connotes that the narrative of the past will always be written in from the bias of the powerful and more dominant player. Example. For instance, the history of the Second World War in the Philippines always depicts the United States as a hero and Imperial Japanese Army as the oppressors. Filipinos who collaborated with the Japanese were lumped in the category of traitors or collaborators. However, a more thorough historical investigation will reveal a more nuanced account of the history of that period instead of simplified narrative as a story of hero versus villain. History and the historian. We cannot go back to the past. We cannot access the past directly as our subject matter. Historians only get to access representation of the past through historical sources and evidences. 
Therefore, it is the historian's job not just to seek historical evidences and facts, but also to interpret these facts. Facts cannot seek for themselves. Next, it is the job of the historian to give meaning to these facts and organize them into a timeline, establish causes, and write history. Last is, his subjectivity will inevitably influence the process of the historical research and methodology that will use the facts that select and deem relevant his interpretation and even the form of his writing. The Analysis School of the History The Analysis School is a group of historians associated with a style of historiography developed by a French historian in the 20th century to stress long-term social history. It also focuses on the idea of the history of ideologies, worldviews, and mental structure, the historical context. An example of this is if the historian chooses to use an oral account as his data in studying the ethnic history of the Ifugao in the Cordilleras during the American occupation, he needs to validate the claims of this informant through comparing and corroborating them with written sources. Therefore, while bias is inevitable, the historian can be balanced out of this by relying on the piece of evidence that back up his claim. In this sense, the historian need not let his bias blind his judgment, and such bias is only acceptable if he maintains his rigor as a researcher. So, hello, I am Albert Kwasai from 3F5. And the part that I will discuss is about historical resources. So, yung ginawa, ginawa ko po dito is ito na yung pinaka summarize ng part ko at saka yung mga other opinions and details po tukol do sa historical resources. So, historical resources, is, it is the historian's most important research tool. So, meron siyang classification ng resources. Yung una is primary resources to ay sources produced at the same time as the event period or subject being studied. So, yung pangalawa is secondary resources. Sources were produced by an author who used primary sources to produce the materials it studied a certain historical subject. So, yung pinagkaiba nitong dalawa, so yung primary sa yung sa yung ano yung ang halimbawa ay yung sa yung nangyari yung sa mismong oras at sa event nung subject tapos yung sa secondary resources naman siya yung mga pinagkuna ng information nung nauna nung dito sa may primary resources primary resources ito yung mga example niya yung eyewitness accounts of convention delegates and their memories we can also use archival documents artifacts, memorabilia letters, census and government records when studying other subject of historical study so doon naman sa secondary resources, in the subject of the Philippines revolution of 1896, they can read Chudoro Agoncillo's revolt of the masses it is mainly because of the period of time it was written Philippine Revolution happened in 1896 and Agoncillo published his work in 1956. Clearly, is not present or born during Philippine Revolution. In addition, Agoncillo used primary sources in writing his research as interviews with the veterans of the revolution and correspondence between among the Katipuneros. So, studying Commonwealth Constitution Convention of 1935. So, ito na lang yung mga inano ko yung mga example. So yung una is convention, newspapers, clippings, Philippine Commission reports of the US, commissioners, records of the convention, drafts of the constitution and photographs of the event. So yung important note, the mention examples of the primary and the secondary sources depends on the period of time when the sources were produced. However, the subject of the historical research can also be a factor to identify or cl- classify the, the sources. Examples are the textbooks. Commonly, it is treated as secondary or tertiary sources, but it shouldn't be automatic. 
it still depends on the subject of the historical research. For, for an instance, you want to write the Philippine history, he can, utilize, he can utilize the textbooks to gather information as to his primary sources. Same as studying the Phil American where the writer may use works of different authors, which So, why and how to analyze historical sources? So, historians need to scrutinize these historical sources to avoid deceptions and to, pi pa and to find out what is the truth behind these historical facts. So, kailangan sa paggagawa ng sa pag-analyze ng historical sources, kailangan ay naka-scrutinize or maayos yung pagkakagawa ng ating mga nakuhang impormasyon para hindi tayo magkaroon ng mali. So, external criticism. Practice of verifying the authenticity of evidence by examining physical characteristics. So, syempre, kailangan nating examine muna yung mga evidence nung sa ganun ay ano, mag, niyang walang mali at saka tama lahat ng information na nakalagay doon. So, yung quality of the paper, yun, the type of the ink, kasi syempre, minsan, ano, malabo, minsan yung sabog yung pagkakaprint doon sa ating ginawang, sa ating ginawa. Tapos, language and words used in the materials, among others. So, syempre, dapat organize din yung mga language and words, nang sa ganun, mas maintindihan pa yung, yung, ano, impormasyon na nakapaloob doon. Examination of truthfulness of the evidence looks at content of the sources. So, syempre, kailangan tama din yung mga evidence doon. Para, <coughs> examine the circumstance of its production. Looks at the truthfulness and factuality of the evidence by looking at the sources, its context, its intended purpose, agenda behind its creation, the knowledge which informed. So, most scandalous cases of deception in the Philippine history. So, ito na lang yung nakasummarize na ginawa ko dun sa ano, yung sa, may, sa libro. Code of Kalanchao, a set of rules contained in an epic marag, maragtas, which was alleged allegedly written by certain Dato Kalanchao. It was 1968 that is, it was proved when William Henry Scott, then a doctoral candidate at the University of Santo Tomas, depended his research on pre-Hispanic sources in Philippine history. So, yung other examples nun ay yung kay, when Ferdinand Marcos claimed that he was a decorate, decorated World War II soldier who led a guerrilla unit called Ang Maharlika. But this was disproven when historians countered to check it was it with war records of the United States. This example reveals that the act of deception can propagate without rigor rigorous historical research proof that true investigation extremely important. So, yun lang po, dun lang, yun lang yung mga nakapalob dun sa aking part na historical sources. So, salamat po. Historical methodology. So, in this part, we will discuss about the method used by the historians. So, historians compromise certain techniques and rules that historians follow in order to properly utilize sources and historical evidence in writing history. And, and then, certain rules apply in case of conflicting accounts in different sources and how properly treat eyewitness accounts and oral sources as uh, valid historical evidence. So, history comes from the Greek word historia, which means knowledge acquired through inquiry or investigation. The term was then adapted to classical and historia became known as the account of the past of an individual or a group of people through written documents and historical evidence. So, validating historical sources is important because the use of unverified, falsified, and untruthful historical sources can lead equally false to a false conclusions. So, without true criticisms of historical evidence, historical deceptions and lies will highly will be highly probable.
Ancient, ancient Filipinos narrated their history through communal songs and epic. So, communal songs like Bahay Kubo, Sit Sit Sit, uh, and Paru Parong Bukid, and etc. And epics like Biyag Nilam Ang, Tuwa Ang, and etc. That they pass orally from one generation to another generation. Only a part of what was observed in the past was remembered and by those who observed and only the part of what was remembered are recorded.